Breaking down the word cholangitis to its Latin derivatives, we get col meaning bile, ang relating to a vessel or duct, and itis meaning inflammation. Cholangitis is therefore inflammation of the vessels of the bilirubin system. This is in contrast to cholecystitis, where the cyst part of the word refers to a fluid container, meaning the gallbladder, hence inflammation of the gallbladder. This inflammation of the bilirubin system mo is most commonly caused by enteric bacteria in the instance of bilirubin stasis or obstruction. The condition itself is not common, with the most common cause gallstones pre presenting in about 0.3 to 1.6% of patients. The median age for presentation is between 50 and 60. Causes of acute cholangitis, we'll split them into infective, inflammatory, this includes gallstones, benign bile structures, Muratsi syndrome, neoplastic causes include obstructive tumors and malignant bile structures. ERCP is also a well-known cause, as are the autoimmune conditions, primary sclerosing cholangitis and primary bilary cholangitis. So gallstones lodged in the common bile duct are the most common cause of acute cholangitis in the West. Note that the stones have to be in the common bile duct, not the cystic duct, which is in the case of cholecystitis. These stones obstruct bile flow and the stasis perma permits ascension of enteric bacteria from the ampulla of water into the, normal, into the normally sterile bilirubin system, resulting in inflammation. Elevated pressures in the common bile duct may result in the infection spreading via the bile caniculi, then hepatic veins, and then the perihepatic lymphatics, leading to bacteremia. Just as the presence of gallstones in the common bile duct result in unabated bacterial growth, ERCP procedures can also cause acute cholangitis by introducing bacteria to the bilirubin system. The risk for post-ERCP infection is increased, especially if there is incomplete drainage of the bilirubin tree. Drainage of the bilirubin tree system is indicated in severe cholangitis. The presence of jaundice and the placement of a stent in malignant bile structures also pose as risk factors. Though ERCP presents with a low risk, 1.4% of infection, however, the mortality rate of said infections was nearly 8%. There are several indications for ERCP, including gallstones, pancreatitis, bilirubin drainage, diagnosing a pancreatic device where the ventral and dorsal pancreatic ducts do not fuse, diagnosing pancreatic or bilirubin malignancy, dilatation of hepatic and bilirubin strictures, stent insertion or dilation procedures in chronic pancreatitis, and it can also serve as manot uh, mano manometry readings in sphincter of OD dysfunction. Obstructive tumors, such as the cancer of the head of the pancreas can impinge on the common bile duct creating blockage in the same way as the gallstones do. These images show ampullary carcinoma circled and subsequent dilatation of the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct. A side note, both ampullary carcinoma and carcinoma of the head of the pancreas produce double duct sign. This is the simultaneous dilatation of the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct. As such, carcinoma of the head of the pancreas can be mistaken for ampullary carcinoma. Cholangiocarcinoma, as the name suggests, is a malignancy of the bilirubin system, presenting most commonly in the seventh decade of life. Its position can vary and is split into intrahepatic and extrahepatic. Intrahepatic sees the tumor presenting in the left and right hepatic duct, and extrahepatic manifestations are split into hyla, which is pictured, and distal, which can present from the ampulla of vata upwards. Extrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma presents with symptoms of cholestasis, such as dark urine, jaundice, itching, along with a painless enlarged gallbladder, Kosovia's law, which is discussed ahead. This is in contrast to intrahepatic presentations, which really present with signs of cholestasis due to the location of the tumor. Now the porta hepatis is a groove on the inferior surface of the liver where various structures enter. Any mass located at this site is capable of causing obstruction and resulting in impeded bile flow. 
This could include, for example, thrombosis, stenosis, or aneurysms of the portal triad vessels, or even a rear mass from nerves that pass through a neural fibril sarcoma. The majority of benign bile strictures are iatrogenic, caused by ERCP, causing damage to the bilvi system, with subsequent repair and scarring by the body, resulting in stricture formation. Other causes of strictures include primary sclerosis and cholangitis, pancreatitis, and similar to ERCP, a gallstone can damage the bile ducts, leading to stricture formation. Primary sclerosis and cholangitis is an autoimmune disease causing abnormalities such as beading and strictures in both the intrahepatic and extrahepatic ducts. It is seen more in men and has a strong association with inflammatory bowel disease, in particular ulcer ulcerative colitis. Primary bilvi sclerosis is an autoimmune condition like PSC, however, it affects only the intrahepatic parts of the bilvi system. It manifests itself predominantly in women, over 90%, having little association with inflammatory bowel disease and presents with a positive anti-mitochondrial antibodies, AMA. Pancreatitis can also result in bile strictures, accounting for 10% of them. But more details of this ahead. Malignant bile strictures are secondary to malignancy and include the conditions already mentioned. Miretsi syndrome. This is where a stone in the cystic duct is large enough to obstruct the common hepatic duct. Pathogenesis. As explained near the beginning of this lecture, elevated pressures due to bile stasis in the bile duct, secondary to obstruction, leads to the free movement of enteric bacteria up through the ampulla of vata, and this results in sepsis or liver abscesses when pressures in the bilvi system are high enough to allow eventual contact with the blood. Most common enteric bacteria involved are E. coli, Klebsiella species, and Pseudomonas species. So what are the risk factors for gallstones? Well, the classic five Fs. Fat, fair, 40, female and fertile. Octreotide causes alterations to bile, which increase the likelihood of developing gallstones, whilst cephalosporins and beta-lactams cause bile stasis, also increasing the risks. Bile strictures can also lead to acute cholangitis via limiting bile flow. Pancreatitis also has an association with bile strictures. This is because the common bile duct and the ventral portion of the pancreas develop from the same source embryologically, with the lower common bile duct transversing the head of the pancreas in the majority of patients in about 80 to 88 percent. As such, both neoplastic and inflammatory changes in the pancreas affect the common bile duct. Risk factors for malignant bilirubin structures, on the other hand, include age and primary sclerosing cholangitis. Clinical presentation. Classically, a patient with acute cholangitis presents with Charcot's triad, which includes fever, white upper quadrant pain, and jaundice. However, in recent studies, it is believed that only 15-20% to 20 of patients with cholangitis present with Charcot's triad, more commonly presenting in those with moderate to severe disease. Severe disease, in addition to Charcot's triad, may also have hypotension and confusion, deemed Reynolds pentad. Just a quick note on Corso, um, Cor Corvosius law, sorry. Um, this states that if the gallbladder is palpably large, non tender, with painless jaundice, the cause is unlikely to be gallstones and points more towards malignancy of the bilvi or pancreatic system. Diagnosis of acute cholangitis is via the Tokyo Guidelines 2013. This consists of three sections systemic inflammation, cholestasis, and imaging. Each section has criteria to meet, meet the scoring for a point in that particular section. For example, points for cholestasis can be scored if the patient has jaundice 
or laboratory data showing abnormal liver functions. A suspected diagnosis requires a point from systemic inflammation criteria and another point from either cholestasis or imaging. Conformatory diagnosis requires one point from all sections. Treatment of acute cholangitis is via empirical antibiotic therapy. Ideally, this should be commenced under four hours of infection. Furthermore, the duration of treatment should be between four to seven days, but extended to two weeks if the patient is positive for bacteremia. Antibiotics for mild to moderate community-acquired acute cholangitis is ceftriaxone or, sex, or cefuroxamine or cephalo, cephazolin. Sorry. Severe acute cholangitis requires metronidazole and a beta-lactam antibiotic, which can be replaced with either cipro or le- levofloxacin if penicillin allergic. Biliary drainage. Severe, severe cases, severe cases of acute cholangitis, reaching grades two or three in accordance with the Tokyo guidelines, require or are indicated for biliary de- drainage via ERCP. So this is the end of the lecture. Thank you again for listening. Here are the references used in this presentation. If you do have any questions or suggestions or anything at all, please do leave them in the comments section below. I'd just like to thank you for um, staying with us and seeing this lecture through all the way to the end. Thank you very much.